Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to test and review the Asus RT AX1800HP. Guys, don't be confused for this is a different model from the AX55 even though they are both AX1800. And I would like to say thanks to our friends at Asus Philippines for letting us try their budget Wi-Fi 6 router. First, let us check the specification of this Asus Wi-Fi router. This is already Wi-Fi 6 router that is capable of 1800 Mbps throughput. 2.5 GHz up to 574 Mbps, while the 5 GHz is up to 1200 Mbps. It has four external antennas, which is non-removable, a dual-core 4 BPE, 256 MB of RAM, supports MU MIMO, OFDMA, beam forming, and has 4 GB LAN ports, and a lot more. Now, let us try to configure this Wi-Fi router. Of course, you need the power grid. Okay, for the power grid, you need to plug this at a wall outlet and the other end will be at the back of your Wi-Fi router in here. And of course, you need a LAN cable. Okay, for the LAN cable, this is actually connected at the one port of this Wi-Fi router. As you can see here, it's a blue LAN port, so you won't be confused with the other LAN port. This is a one port actually. Okay, and of course, the other end, you need to plug this at the source of your internet connection. For us, it will be the modem router given to us by our internet service provider. And now, let us try to configure this Wi-Fi router on a web browser. But you can also use the Asus mobile application on your mobile devices to configure this Wi-Fi router. First is we need to connect to the Wi-Fi SSID of that RTAX 1800HP. And the default SSID for that one will be ASUS underscore 40. Hit connect. Then after that one, we need to access the web management console IP address, which is 192.168.50.1. And hit enter. Then welcome to ASUS router. Click here to continue. Then of course, when using HTTPS protocol, this will appear. And hit yes. Then after that one, hit the create a new network button. Then, of course, it will ask you if there is a special requirement for your ISP. And, of course, no. Then, after that one, you need to enter the network name or the SSID that you prefer. For us, it will be AX1800. Then, of course, the password will be this one for the default password for now. And as you can see here, it will advise you if your password is actually so easy and it will be dangerous because some people might able to access your Wi-Fi network and hit apply. Then we suggest you to try a mix of letters, numbers, and symbols. Do you want to continue? Okay. And do you want to continue? Click OK again. Just ignore that one for now. And of course, we're going to set the router login name. And let's try default one first, which is admin and the credentials. Then after that one, hit next. Okay, and right now, as you can see, we are already disconnected from our Wi-Fi router, which is the ASUS underscore 40. And let us try to check if it is already created the AX1800 and the AX1800 5G. And of course, we're going to connect to the AX1800. Enter the credentials. And we are already connected to our Wi-Fi router. The configuration is actually straightforward and so easy, even for a non-technical person. Now, let us see the features that we can configure with this Wi-Fi router. If you don't like to see the configuration, just go straight forward with the actual range test and gaming performance on this timeline. For the web management console, you need to enter the web management IP address. For us, it will be 192.168.50.1 and the username that we have set earlier, which is admin and the password as well is the same and press enter and after that one you will be redirected to the main management page where you are actually configured or set to network map under the network map you'll be able to see your internet status if it is connected or not and the security level of course the client that are currently connected and also the ai mesh node that is configured on your network 
And on the right side, we have here the system status for the wireless, for the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency. There is an SSID name where you can change it here and also the password. The same goes with the 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequency. And as for the status, you'll be able to see here the hardware utilization, which is for the C CPU, which is a quad-core processor. And we have here the RAM, which is 256 MB of RAM and the Ethernet ports that are actually allocated for your hardwired or using a LAN cable devices. And now let us try to go to the AI mesh feature. Under the AI mesh features, you'll be able to see here the topology. If you have some of the nodes already configured, you'll be able to see it here. But right now we only have the RTAX 1800 HP as a single AI mesh router. And aside from that one, we have here the system settings. Under the system settings, there is actually an Ethernet backhole mode for better mesh traffic all over your other mesh nodes. And aside from that one, you have your roaming blacklist. For the roaming blacklist, this is actually configurable if you want a device that to move from one node to another. And of course, there is the system reset to factory default and of course, system reboot. In here, you'll be able to have 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequency for your guests. Right now, let us try to create a Wi-Fi guest network for the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency enabled. And these are the actual options. You can hide the SSID if you want it to hide to all other guests, but you have to configure this manually on those mobile devices that want to connect to this guest network. And of course, you can change the SSID name and the authentication method if it's uh, no password or you want to set a password for this one and the access time as well or unlimited access and the bandwidth limiter. Okay, for the bandwidth limiter, if you have set this on this guest network, this is the maximum bandwidth that they'll be able to utilize on your internet connection. And aside from that one, we have here the access intranet. Okay, if your guests are currently connected to the guest network, basically they shouldn't be able to access your main network. So they won't be able to access your uh, personal home media server or other server within your network. And aside from that one, we have here the guest network on AI Mesh. I really like this feature because on my Asus Blue Cave, I don't have this one because that one is an older model. But this one, if you have a mesh network, if your guests try to move all over the place or all over your house, they will still be connected to the guest network if you have an AI mesh network. And of course, you can also enable Mac filter if you want to reject or accept these devices on this guest network. And now let us try to go to the AI protection. Under the AI protection, we have here disabled AI protection. Basically, you have to enable this one, but we already have a router security assessment. And I believe this one is the very weak wireless password strength and the default router login username and password. That is actually not good. So you have an idea if your network is secure. So aside from this one, you have here malicious site blocking, infected device protection and blocking. And aside from that one, we have here uh, the other tabs for representing those features. And now let us try to go to the parental controls. Under the parental controls, you'll be able to set enable time scheduling. Let's enable this one. And here you can actually set a device on when they will be able to access the internet. So like, for example, this one annihilation, and you can see here, if you'll be able to access the internet during weekdays or weekend if you want. There are other things as well that you can add. So it is actually very flexible if you want to give them access only uh, Tuesday and Thursday. You can create this one and hit finish and so on and so forth. Now, let us try to go to the QoS feature. In here, let us try to enable, enable QoS and you'll be able to see here two types, which is the QoS, which is the traditional one and the bandwidth limiter. Okay, for the bandwidth limiter, you can actually configure only 32 clients on what bandwidth they will be able to utilize. Like, for example, let's try this one and you can set it here and click plus sign. And now let us go to the traffic monitor. For the traffic monitor, guys, this will only show you the information regarding your network traffic on your Asus Wi-Fi router. So currently, it is scaled to MB and you can set this one to KB, MB, gigabyte or terabyte. So right now, we only have 0 0.1 Mbps and let us go to the wireless. Under the wireless, let us try to 
narrow it down for the most basic information that we need to understand first is the 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6 mode because this is a good option for this Asus Wi-Fi router because not all devices nowadays are Wi-Fi 6 most of our devices are still on Wi-Fi 5 but there are actually some issues that uh, we encounter when we connect to the Wi-Fi 6 network but for me luckily enough I don't have any issues even though my devices are Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6 I don't have any issues connecting to a Wi-Fi 6 router and you can in disable this one if you want if you're having a problem connecting to Wi-Fi 6 and the other thing is the wireless Mac meter for the wireless Mac meter you'll be able to block devices or only allow devices that is actually specified here so you can uh, choose this one or type in the MAC address of the device that you want to accept or block and the uh, radio settings you'll be able to set here professional settings and of course the roaming blacklist for the roaming blacklist guys this is an option for a device if you have a mesh network if you want them to stay on a mesh node and you don't want them to roam around or move from one node to another you will enable this one and now let us go to the LAN settings okay under the LAN settings you'll have here the LAN IP the HTTP server if you want to uh, switch this one uh, to change the DHCP range you can actually do that one but for us we are using the basic or the pre-configured DHCP IP pool in here and of course you can also create a routing if you want to or if you need to set the network host IP the netmask and of course the gateway but for now we are not enabling this one so let us go to the one features okay under the one the basic thing that i uh, usually discuss is the dual one this wi-fi router is capable of having a dual one you can configure this one if you have multiple isp or internet service provider so you have a redundant connection so we have already created a video for this one to better understand how this dual one works okay let's try to enable this one the same thing it has a failover or load balance and you can choose the secondary one if it's a LAN 1, LAN 2, LAN 3 or LAN 4 and aside from that one we have here the port clicker, virtual server port forwarding, DMC, DNS and NAT pass through now let us go to IPv6 this is actually IPv6 capable and you can also set the VPN let us try to check what we can see with the VPN features Okay, under the VPN, you can set here uh, the VPN server and the VPN client or Instagram. So if you have a VPN connectivity, this is actually, uh, I'm not sure if this will fit your needs, but this has a VPN capability. And now, let us go to the firewall. Under the firewall, we have here uh, enable firewall, enable this protection, and other important things like inbound firewalls and enable IPv4 firewall and basic configuration a lot of things if you are actually worried about your network security and now we have here also the url filter we have created a specific video for this one on how this works and how to configure this you can actually check that on my channel next is for the administration under administration you have the option for the operation mode for the operation mode it can be a main ai mesh router or an ai mesh AP or a repeater mode or media bridge or AI mesh node and aside from that one we have here the system for the system this is where you can actually change the username and password for your administration account or for the web management console and other things for managing your Wi-Fi router and aside from that one we have here the firmware upgrade if there is an upgrade upgrade your Wi-Fi router basically it will be for security or better utilization or better performance of your Wi-Fi router and aside from that one what else we have here uh, system lag and network tools basically we have already discussed the important things or important features of this Wi-Fi router now for the range test we have an internet subscription plan of 300 Mbps for the initial test just standing in front of the Wi-Fi router we are getting around 279 Mbps for download while 261 Mbps for upload now, let us try to move upstairs or on the roof deck. For those who are new in our channel, we have a concrete house and concrete flooring. And it is actually as shown in this video. For the speed test, 
we are getting around 16.6 Mbps for download, while for upload, it is 17 Mbps. Now, let us go to the bedroom. And we have a thick, solid wooden door, and yet, we are getting 87.2 Mbps for download, while 92.1 Mbps for upload. Now, let us do a test on the ground floor. And guys, the stairs is actually solid concrete with a wood on top and we are still getting 82 Mbps for download and 24.1 Mbps for upload. This router can actually cover a three-story house as long as you place it in a strategic location like in the middle of the house. In our case, we have placed it on the second floor. But always remember, the performance might vary from one house to another since every house has a different construction materials. Now that we know that it can cover the entire house, let us try to do some gaming tests on this Wi-Fi router. For the gaming test, let us make sure that we are connected to the AX1800 since we have a lot of Wi-Fi networks in our area. Front of the router, definitely we have a single digit latency. And when we try to move to the other side of this room, there is a solid concrete wall in between and we still have a single digit latency. And going to the bedroom, we are also having a single digit latency on Mobile Legends. And let us try on the root deck. And again, we are still having a single digit latency. And we even check our connection to confirm that we are connected to the AX1800 Wi-Fi router. We try to move around the root deck and from time to time, we are getting two digit latency but the max was around 24 ms, which is still good for competitive gaming. You have seen on how easy it is to configure and the actual performance. For my verdict, I am giving this RTA X1800 HP a 4.5 star. The reason that it is actually high is I always check on the actual performance and the pricing. For the range, it delivers a great range and all the location I was able to have an internet access but not just range. Even though I was playing on the root deck, I'm still getting a single to two digit latency on Mobile Legends. And take note that I'm connected to the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency. Guys, for gaming as much as possible, you want to connect to the 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequency for less interference and better performance. But with this Wi-Fi router, I was able to play a good game even on 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency. And for the pricing, it is around 4,000 pesos and they have some partner stores that has a promo on this one, like PC Hub. It's around 3,790 pesos at the time of this video. So try to check that one out. And that is actually a good price considering that this router performs and is Wi-Fi 6 and of course AI mesh capable. Now for the reason that it is not a 5-star. This is not actually a major issue for me, but maybe for some. First is the USB port. There is no USB port on this Wi-Fi router and ASUS routers USB port are actually something. It is really helpful for a lot of things. Second is the management console is actually slower to load compared to the other ASUS Wi-Fi router that we have tested. And actually that doesn't really affect the performance of the Wi-Fi range and the performance on online gaming for this Wi-Fi router. You have seen the testing. See for yourself. Overall, this is a great Wi-Fi 6 router from ASUS and try to consider it if you're looking for or buying a third-party Wi-Fi router. And I think that is all. If you have comment and suggestion, comment down below or message me at JK Chavez on Epi. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe and bye.